Hi everybody, hello and welcome as always. I am Sean, this is In The Mix, at episode 47 of our Hashtag United series in Football Manager 2019. Pretty much following on, well not pretty much following on because the next games would have been the next games, but following on from where we left off in the first episode of Season 8. We had two draws, a 2-2 draw, which we actually did pretty well in to come back from 2-0 down, and then a nil-all draw against Dartford. Not the most exciting games in the world. And then following on, we had three wins on the trot against Wrexham, Dover, and Salford. And then two heavy defeats, both 3-0 at-home games against Boreham Wood and York. I learnt a bit, but I think we'll go through that in a minute. Followed up with two draws again, having to come from behind each time against AFC Telford, and a 2-2 draw with Swindon where they actually came back from 2-0 down, which was quite frustrating. But we've turned it around. We had a good 4-0 win against Sutton, a good 3-2 victory with a late winner to Jason Fisher against Macclesfield, a 4-3 goal fest against Forest Green, and then two wins against Leighton Orient coming from behind, a late penalty in the 88th minute, and a winner in injury time to beat them away from uh, at home. And then a good 3-0 win against Billericay, which is crazy. Billericay are currently sitting bottom of the division, but they are spending so much a week on certain players. Like They've got guys earning like 2.5k a week, which is insane. Like We're still not paying anybody, even our key players, higher than £300, which is mental. But the big thing, the big issue that I've had is that I've been fiddling around too much, like Batman's favourite villain, the Fiddler. And we spoke about it in the last game, wanting to switch between our mentalities more regularly, but I think what I've done is I've gone too far in that direction and I haven't given us enough of an opportunity to just play in our positive mindset, get used to it, and get you know good strings of results against. So like the last episode, we had those two draws and realistically like we could have won either of those games. And then against Wrexham Dover, we did quite well with that positive mentality. Won both the matches and were on top in a lot of the possession stats. And then for whatever reason, at the time when we played Salford, it was away from home. They were currently, at that point, sitting second in the division, I think. And I went to the cautious mentality, and it worked for that game. But then I was too reliant on it in the games against Boar and Wood, who I think were sitting fourth, and York, who were sitting on top. So I went cautious into those games. And once you kind of get into that mentality too many times in a row, teams just start to dominate against you. And like both of these games, we were comfortably beaten. It wasn't close in either one, really. And in both, we were 2-0 down. Or one nil down against Boreham Wood, but two nil down against York at half time. I then had to fire the rocket, switch to our attacking mentality, and things didn't get any better from there. So I think we really need to kind of pick and choose where we're going to use that cautious mentality. Because then I did the same thing again. I switched us back to positive, and we actually got some draws again. We got some wins, and then for whatever reason against Forest Green, I think they were fifth at the time, and we were sitting around sixth or seventh. I went to cautious, even though we were at home. I really shouldn't have done it. I should just save the cautious mentality for when we're playing good teams away from home. And when we know that they're actually going to come out and try and play against this, because it doesn't work that well if we're also playing against teams that are trying to counterattack, because we're very lackadaisical in like our movement out once we recover possession. Like it's very, it's slow in transition is the way, best way I can think to put it, because we're always trying to keep men back, and instead that just invites more pressure. So one of the big things that I'm going to try and do is not fiddle around as much and just give ourselves some time with that positive mentality. We did switch back to it for the last two games against Leighton Orient. We got the win albeit very late, and then against Billericay as well. We were good this entire game. Probably the most complete performance we've put together, other than maybe the game against Sutton. We kept a clean sheet, which is a massive improvement. Now, we did also talk in the last episode that we wanted to improve our defence and how we had changed our tactic a little bit to try and keep up with that and try and make it a bit easier for our defenders. Despite that, we've still scored the most goals in the division, so that's great that we're continuing on that goal-scoring flair this season, but we've conceded 23 goals, which is the 18th best in the division. So we're down there amongst like the teams fighting it out for relegation in terms of goals conceded. And our goal difference of plus six, it's not helped by the fact that we had back-to-back 3 nil losses, but it's not really reflective of where we want to be. So we are currently sitting in seven spots, six points off top, which is just fortunate that the league has been relatively even and a lot of the playoff teams are kind of swapping and changing positions week to week. We do also have a game in hand against Hartlepool that will come up later in the season, which was due to some international call-ups around that time. I think we lost two players, they lost three or four, so the game got postponed and it's now going to take place in December. Other than that, though, not the worst place in the world to be. We did say we just want to try and get to the 1st of January, in the playoff positions and within touching distance of whoever happens to be leading the league at the time so that once we get into January and our games all split out again and we have a week's distance between games we can start to put together some results we can start to put together decent runs of form and get everyone at training throughout the course of the week and actually progress from there I think there's only been one week and it was because of that rescheduling around here between Telford and Swindon that we actually haven't had the Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday structure since the season started. And we know we've got FA Trophy games coming up. We know we've got FA Cup games coming up. 
our schedule isn't going to improve really until we get into the new year. So it's good that we're hanging in there. It's good that we haven't dropped down as low as we did last season, around 19th, 20th, flirting with relegation for a little bit. But there is still massive improvements that we could be making even early in the season. So two games today. We're going to play Aldershot in this first game. They're currently sitting 16th, but a decent side. They were very good in the league last year. And then a home game against Cambridge, who have been a bit up and down. Even though they're in 15th, they are only five points behind us, so it's not a massive gap. And I'm just double-checking. Like, Aldershot, 7-2, four favourites to actually win the league this season. Cambridge were 40 to one so still massive improvements on us. And two teams that potentially have the ability to give us trouble if we aren't at our best. Enough talking from me, though. Let's jump into the game against Aldershot and look at the two lineups. Okay, and they are playing 4-3-3. Vale was, I think, the leading scorer in the division and had the highest match rating player of the division last year. He's playing out on the right wing this season, but still leading scorer. He was leading the line previously. And then Yoma, we also know because we tried to bring him in when he was released from Tottenham. For us, it's Dennis in goal. Downing and Norman is a central defensive partnership. Fitzpatrick is our leading assist getter so far on that left wing. And Waring will come in on the right because Robinson is currently injured. He picked up a hamstring strain, I think it was, when he was away on under-21 international duty with the Northern Irish side. O'Loughlin's going to come in and take the armband from Oliver Hyam because Hyam's serving his five yellow card suspension in this game. He should be back for the next one. Fisher will anchor midfield. Smith and Gallagher on the wings. Gallagher's been fantastic, our highest average rated player so far. And Chantler and Threkaj up top. Threkaj leading scorer, but Chantler has been struggling. I've been rotating him and Grant quite a bit, but what's happened in the last couple of weeks is that Grant has been scoring frequently off the bench. So I'm hopeful if we're doing quite well, and even if Chantler isn't having the best game, we can bring Grant on and get the most out of his kind of super sub status at the moment. Um, passionately, let's say, I know a lot of you are keen to be to avenge what happened when we last at Lenar. Let's not focus on them, let's focus on us. Great opportunity to show all the pundits they've been right to back you up. It's actually quite frustrating how many clubs I'm actually able to go and say we owe what happened in the last game because like, we lost a lot of games last season, particularly towards the tail end. No, opposite, particularly towards the start. We started really poorly and then we picked it up towards the end. First highlight of the game, it's played to Galbraith in midfield. Good tackle there from Fisher. Smith now with the ball. Back to Fisher again. Played to O'Loughlin into space. We've got a 2v1 here if we can work it right. Finds Gallagher on the left-hand side. Can he get the strike away? And it rebounds around and finds its way to Tony Smith at far post. And he pokes home for his sixth goal of the season. I think it was an excellent save, really, from Dubois, Desbois, whoever that how does Dubois, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, in the order shot goal. Good reverse pass to Gallagher. Gallagher first time gets there. And then the second time, I can't tell if he was actually crossing or shooting. But something happened. It hit someone and it fell to Smith and Smith poked it home wide open from about seven yards on the angle. And that would see Sleepfrog, Hartlepool and going to sixth, space, uh, sixth place. They're playing fourth place Boston United today away from home. Fitzpatrick now, the free kick from about 25 yards out. It was pretty much straight down the middle, even though it was curling. And he's still only got 13 free kicks, even though he's been over a year now working on free kicks as a specialty. And we just don't get that good a return rate out of how many he actually takes in highlights. Fisher's picked up a yellow card, so we will keep an eye on that as we go into the second half. Norman now, going to start with the ball on halfway. Played forward to Smith. Into Thrakash. Got a man overlapping now in Waring. Can he make a decent return into the box towards Chantler? And Chantler's hit the post. It's fallen to Gallagher, who cuts it back, and Vale should scramble away. Good highlight, though. It's good to see that we have started the game, carrying on for where we've gone in the last two matches with those good wins. 30 minutes, I'm going to mix it up. I'm just going to use praise instead of demand more because we're 1-0 up and so far doing well. They've immediately got a highlight, which is disaster. Vale to take a free kick at the top of the box to Ioma. Good tackle. Everyone recovers. We've got a 2v2 as O'Loughlin carries the ball forward. He needs to release Chantler on the left wing. It's a heavy ball, taking him pretty wide. Can he make it a decent cross? Towards Threkage, out to Fisher again, who gets the first time strike away from the top of the box. And it's just wide past the far post. We've got a corner here, Smith to take. Deep one towards Chandler. He gets his header towards goal, but it's just over the crossbar. Deep throw in here. Ayoma picks up the ball right towards the back corner for all the shot. No one goes to him to take the angle away. He plays forward to Vale. A line of confrontations inside our own half, so we kind of let teams have it in their own half quite a bit. But Gallagher has recovered, and he's looking to release the cash. who's gotten behind his man. Can he find the finish? It's an excellent finish from Richard Thrakaj. His seventh goal of the season and a lovely way to pass over the top from Bernard Gallagher. So you can kind of see it there. That was actually a really good example because as soon as they got inside our half, uh, Gallagher was willing to make the commitment. And prior to that, we were just letting them have it, which probably isn't the worst idea at lower level football. 
but sometimes it is frustrating, particularly when you watch a guy like a Yoma take a throw and get the ball back and then carry it all the way, like an entire half the pitch. But I shouldn't complain because we've just scored. So got to remain positive, got to remain focused. So we're going 2 nil up at half time, which is a very good 10 shots, 6 on target, 56% of the ball. They've had 2 shots, 2 on target, and 44. Not looking to overcomplicate stuff. We are away from home, so I'm going to use an assertive shout, and I'm just going to say I'm very pleased with your performance. Keep it going, lads. As we always do, we're going to give it about 15 minutes, and then we'll have a look at form, fitness, and obviously Jason Fisher's yellow card, and have a look at some subs from that point on. But I've been pretty good. I haven't been throwing three subs on randomly at regular intervals i've been trying to keep one sub up my sleeve for that last 10 minute period and so far i don't actually think we've had anyone sent off yet touch wood touch whatever wood you can jason fisher do not listen to me do not get yourself sent off now so now i'm going to make two of those subs we're going to bring on alex Vaughan to play as the box to box move our lock on to deep lying playmaker just because jason fisher has that yellow card over him uh, we're also going to take off jimmy chandler who hasn't been bad with a 7.0 match rating but i want to see if grant can continue his goal scoring ways off the bench and really give us a little bit of a boost to our goal difference. We've got a corner here, but we're not going to see the highlight apparently. And now gone, we're going to use Old Faithful, our Get Creative shout. Two have responded as inspired, the subs haven't paid much attention, and Downing looks pressured for whatever reason. I'm not asking Downing to do anything crazy. Kalantari with a free kick. It was always outside the post. It had a long distance to come back to get in, and thankfully they have just missed. Norman's picked up a yellow card, as has Gallagher. So we might give it five more minutes and then look at making a t sub. In fact, we're going to make that one now. We're going to bring on Agnew for Norman just because of that yellow card. And because we're into the last 10 minutes, we're going to use our demand more shout just so that everyone focuses for the last 10 minutes. And it'd be great to get another clean sheet. Corner routine now, 89th minute. Gallagher to take the short one towards Grant. It was in that sort of area. It's going to come back out to Gallagher again. He's got men through the middle if he can find them. He's playing it a long way back. And they've left men forward. He goes to Fitzpatrick now. He goes across to Agnew, who can switch out the other side. He goes to Downing. Back to Dennis. Look for the fullback. Instead, he's gone long towards Gallagher, who lets it run. Iyama's got a couple of men on him now. Now to Moore. Vaughan's recovered. Can he find the finish or square it up? He could have squared that one up to Threkash, who was wide open on the six-yard box. Instead, he struck straight at the goalkeeper. But still, good pressure. Picked our spot. Went together. Went well. Robotham now with a corner, and I'm not sure who that was, but someone headed it over from not far out. So a late little flurry of action, late little flurry of highlights in this one. And we've got another corner here, 30 seconds remaining. O'Loughlin at the top of the box, can he get the strike away? Instead, he's given it straight back, and it's a long ball forward from Aldershot, who've committed three men forward. Dennis can hoof it away, and Gallagher's on his own on that wing. Ref, feel free to blow the whistle whenever you feel like it. O'Loughlin now to Gallagher, overlapping fullback isn't honoured because the referee has called a halt to the game. So decent, uh, 16 shots, 11 on target, 51% possession, eight shots, four on target, 49% for all the shots, despite playing at home. Those two f first half goals were more than enough for us to get beyond them today. And I'm just gonna say, I'm very pleased with the result and your performance. Everyone's responded positively, which is always great to see. Gallagher gets the man of the match award. He has been excellent so far this season. One goal gets him an 8.3. And what we might do is jump straight forward into the game against Cambridge United. We likely won't change the lineup. We might bring Hyam in because he's back from his yellow card suspension. But magic of editing, you guys will get there now. Just like that, we're a couple of days ahead against Cambridge. Only two changes to our lineup. Hyam will come back in and pull on the captain's arm and again. Fisher's on the cusp of his yellow card ban, which makes a little bit of sense. Grant will also come in for Chandler. We'll give him an opportunity from the start. We'll see how he goes. O'Loughlin drops back down to the bench. And for Cambridge, they're playing a flat 4-4 in defensive midfield and a 1-1 up top. So a man in the hole trying to create a space. Looks like only one of their wingers is actually pushing on that far, though. Ashton seems a little bit deeper, but that could just be... It's hard to level out sometimes with Mars. I'm going to passionately say, again, media have given you a lot of credit lately. Put on a worthy display. Everyone seems motivated. So two from two in terms of using that as the pre-match talk. And if we can get another 2-0 victory, I will absolutely take that. I've only just noticed it there, but Dartford have played 17 games. They've won eight and drawn nine and haven't lost yet. So Dartford is still undefeated, which is nine draws is insane from 17 games. But to be this far in the competition undefeated is kind of impressive. They are playing Boston United at home today. Boston having a good season as well. So maybe that run comes to an end and we catch up a little bit with them. All right, I've got a highlight here. Warren to take a throw in. 
Threkaj has won the ball back. Waring finds Haim at the top of the box, and he gets the strike away. A fantastic goal for him. I forgot to mention, he actually won the September Player of the Month for the whole division, and the Young Player of the Month for four goals, I think, in five appearances. And that is his sixth goal of the season already. He's really kind of elevating his game in that box-to-box role this season. And once it gets on that left peg, he's only little. He's like 150 centimetres or something crazy. Once it gets on that left peg, that low centre of gravity smacks it home. They've immediately got a highlight from kickoff, which I'm not super concerned about, but we'll see what happens. Whitaker plays it out to Hargraves, who's got a man on the far side in Reading. Cross gets shut down. Cross gets shut down again. It's going to be Threkaj on the right wing, on his own. He just needs to try and hold it and bring in players. He finds Haim now. Haim plays it across to Gallagher. Gallagher gets the strike away. He probably would have been better served just passing that one across the six-yard box because we had runners. But well done to Threkaj, holding the ball up against multiple people. They've got a free kick here. O'Neill to take, and it's a good free kick. It's his first goal of the season. I'm tempted to go and have a look at what his actual free kick taking is. Let's have a quick squeeze. 13 free kick taking, yeah, fair enough. It's a good strike. We've got a 13 free, take, free kick taker. He can't do that. It's around the wall and curls back inside. Dennis would have been unsighted, so they've pulled the goal back with their first highlight. Another highlight again. O'Neill to take another free kick. This time he goes short to Strawn. To O'Neill again. Crossfield switch out towards Fox. We're closing down and we're getting forward. Reese now with the ball. Back to Fox again on the left-hand side. Inside to Hargreaves. Don't commit to the ball too high at the pitch, boys. Playing back, playing back. Fox with the ball. Smith is going to recover. He's got a runner alongside and a runner in the middle if he can cut it back. Instead, he's brought down in the box. And I think it's going to be Mark Grant to take the penalty here to go 2-1 up after 30 minutes. I'm just going to prepare it. If we do finish this, I'm going to praise everyone. Oh, it's saved by Patterson. Not only did he save it, he held it too. I was too, like, I can't get ahead of myself. I feel like me clicking shout and clicking praise is why that got saved. Right, I've got an immediate highlight here. I've used our demand more shout. It's going to come back to Warring and to Fisher now. Himes at the top of the box and they find him now. Strike from distance. It was always curling away after taking it on his left foot. And it's just past the near post. Fitzpatrick with a deep free kick now. Towards Downing. Back stick. It's headed away. It's pinballing around in there and it falls to Richard Threkaj who gets his eighth goal of the season. Haim officially gets the assist but we'll check it out in 3D and see how that one actually made its way to him. Downing's in the area. I think it's Connolly that gets it away. And then it pinballs around a little bit. Haim does lay it off quite nicely to Threkaj, who had a good angle at it. And he smashes that one home from about 10 yards on his left peg. And we go 2-1 up. So looking at the stats, interesting. We've had seven shots five on target, but only 35% of the ball. Maybe Cambridge is set up to keep it in their half. And because they're not really coming into our half, we're not engaging them further up the pitch and winning the ball back and getting the line share of possession, which is what we have done. We actually have the second best, oh, O'Neill with a free kick. It's on target again, it's hit the deck, and Patrick Redding has equalised. So they are really hurting us from these set pieces where they're shooting. And I think it hit the post. It either hit Dennis or it hit the post. We'll check it out in 3D. It's a good strike, but it's always back at the keeper. It hits the post, I think, and then Redding just, we're slow to recover, and he's the first one to the follow up and smashes it home from about a yard out. So like I was saying, we actually have good possession stats. I think we have the second highest average possession in the league, which is interesting because last season we were very low. I think it's just because we're doing the shorter passing now in our positive mentality and in our tactic. All right, half time, nine shots, six on target, 38% of the ball. They've had seven, four, and 62%. We're going to go into the dressing room and I'm going to fire a minor rocket. I'm going to assertively say I'm far from pleased with what I just saw from this team. Most seem fired up. And Grant is really struggling, so I'm actually going to talk to him individually and just assertively say, you've just been unlucky so far, because it's really just the penalty miss that would be what is hurting his score. We've also got Fitzpatrick who's struggling a little bit and Gallagher who's struggling on that left wing, but the most thing I'm conscious of are the two yellow cards, so I'll look to sub those guys in about 15 minutes. Highlight here. Highlight here with Waring to Smith. Warring with a deep ball across. Gallagher's in the area, but it's headed away. Heim out to Fitzpatrick now. Back to Heim again. He gets a curling effort. A rapier strike that was absolutely flying. And Keeper does well to push it over for a corner. Smith to take. Goes short to Gallagher. Smith with the ball across, and Patterson does well to come out and claim. Is that the end of the highlight, or are we going to see a little bit more here? Hasn't immediately cut away. Strawn's 1v1, but Downing recovers. Fisher now out to Warring. Long ball forward towards Threkash, who has gotten goal side and gets the strike away. But Patterson, again, is proving to be quite monumental in the early stages of the second half. We've got another corner. Smith's going to take. Deep one across towards Grant. It's headed away to Reese. Thankfully, the highlight ends because they were flooding forward. I think they had a 3v3 if they had played it right. 
No, I said I wouldn't fiddle, but I'm going to risk it all to get the biscuit. We're going to make three subs after 57 minutes. Chadwick is going to come on for Smith just due to that yellow card concern. I'm going to trust Oliver Heim as our captain to be responsible and get through the game. So Lachlan will come on for Fisher, who's struggling a little bit. And we're going to take off Chandler, who hasn't had the best of games. Uh, sorry, we're going to bring on Chandler for Grant, who really hasn't had the best of games and, of course, missed that penalty, which may prove to be very important as we get towards the end of this one. We're going to use our Get Creative shout, good old faithful around the hour mark. It usually works. Most responded is inspired. And we have taken a large step back, step forward in terms of match stats as well. 12 shots, 8 on target, 41% of the ball now. But really, I just want someone to poke home a scrappy goal. We do have a highlight here. Warren to take a throw in. Played to O'Loughlin. Across to Hyam. Back to O'Loughlin again. We can reset out the other side if we play the right pass. Instead, he's taking 8 or 9 touches for no reason and plays it back to Warren. O'Loughlin again. Back to Norman. Start again. Out to Downing. Work it out to the other side. Downing's coughed it up in a bad area. Whitaker's coming flying forward. The keeper's got to come out, and Dennis does, and bails us out, and manages to push it out for a throw, not a corner. Just Downing kills me. Downing absolutely kills me. Because he consistently like gets good um, feedback from the assistants and stuff that he's trained very well. His star rating has improved like a point, like a whole star in the last 12 months since we signed him. But just in highlights, particularly when we're recording, he just does the dumbest shit. Looks like they've moved to a more cautious mentality. I'm tempted to go to a little bit more attacking. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fiddle. I'm leaving that life behind. All right, we've got a highlight here. 86 minute. Patterson's going to take a long goal kick. Should be recovered by Fitzpatrick, but Redding, the goal scorer earlier, has recovered. Hargraves got a man outside in O'Neill, the goal scorer. Ball across, and Dennis has claimed it very well. We've got a 2v2 if we can get the ball over the top. He's gone for the long one towards Threkash. It's headed back. Connolly now switches out to Reading on the right-hand side. It looks like he switched wings in the second half. Back to O'Neill. Deep ball across. It's headed away. Only as far as Ashton to Reading. Strike from distance. It's an excellent goal. Jesus. Second goal of the season for Patrick Reading. He's only he scored twice against us today. And let's check this one out. O'Neill with a deep ball across. It's well headed away by Waring. Ashton just plays a little reverse pass inside to Redding. He takes a touch out and on his left peg smacks that one into the far corner. Ugh, frustrating because they're shit. We've got any more shouts? Let's just use get creative, I guess. Ain't going to be any late drama here. We're going to be able to pull back an equaliser. Four minutes to be added on and it is rocketing through those four minutes. About 15 seconds remaining. We do have the ball. I'm with the ball now. Out to Fitzpatrick. Get it forward, please. Get it forward. Played to Chandler, who immediately loses it. And the referee calls full time, so we've thrown away a good record with a 3-2 defeat. 14 shots, 9 on target, 45% of the ball. They had 11, 6, and 55. O'Neill with a great free kick. Redding with a double. And that penalty miss comes back to bite us in the ass. Let's see what that does to our league position. Uh, I'm just going to calmly say, far from pleased with what I just saw from this team, Hashtag United in disappointing collapse. Cambridge's considerable physical advantage paid dividends on a fine autumn afternoon. It'll be because they're heavier than us. It's always that. Patrick Redding gets the 8.9 and two goals. Man of the match award. We've got some fitness concerns, which I've been waiting for these to come up. Looks like Gallagher and Fitzpatrick are currently struggling. Could do with the rest. I'm not going to do it for the next game, but I will do it for the FA Trophy fixture. And we'll get Chance El Kiembe and Ash Bolton in for those games. Just so you guys can see it, I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel here. We might bring Grant back off and start Chandler. We've got a game in four days, so what I'm going to do is for the guys that are going to play in that one, we're going to give them one day's rest from training. We don't have training scheduled for Sundays anyway. And then the two guys that are struggling for fitness and looking for a rest, we're going to give them the full three days off. So effectively what will happen is everyone will have tomorrow off. We'll come back and do a session on Monday. Everyone will have a day off on Tuesday, and then we'll go into the game against Hartlepool, except Gallagher and Fitzgerald, Fitzpatrick, sorry, will have the whole three days off. So that's basically our managing fitness in the early part of the season because our schedule is just unrelenting. Again, in October, we're going to continue. I think we have another FA Trophy game if we get through. So we're going to have more and more football that has no gaps in between, and we're still waiting for the draw for the FA Cup, which I think is roughly around the middle of this week between these Boston and Nuneaton games. But what we might do is we're going to jump ahead again a little bit further. We're going to go and come back around the end of December for the games against Salford and Dover. Salford, of course, great story. 
on the BBC a couple of years ago. Tons of cash, just need to build the fan base. Very similar to us, actually, how we're doing in this fixture or in this series. And then uh, Dover, who you guys don't know this, but I used to play as Dover all the time. They used to have this great pink away kit that I thought was the best. And when they were in the Van Rama South and at the bottom level of the competition, I played with them every year. And I bet they wish I was back because they're currently 24th in the league. Right, so a bit up, a bit down. It does leave us with a record of eight wins, four draws, and four losses, which isn't ideal, but it is enough to keep us in the playoff area. And thankfully, there isn't any one team that's like running away with it this season. We are eight points now behind York who are in top spot. But with a game in hand, that could become five points again very quickly. And like I said, we're just aiming to get to January in the mix. No, in the mixer, who knew? That was not deliberate. But we want to be in and around those playoff positions so that once we get into the second half of the season, we've got that space between our games. We can actually do our training sessions. We can actually plan a bit more. We will start picking up points because that's what happened last year, and I'm sure it's going to happen again. You guys have to keep tuned to the next episode to see how we start 2026 in the game. But more than anything, I just appreciate you guys watching this episode. Throw a like on it if you enjoyed it and want to continue your support. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on future videos as they continue to release. We're actually, I think, a couple of subs away from 100, uh, and I might do a special video once that actually comes through. You can also follow in the mixer underscore FM on Twitter. Link in the description below. Go and check out our other videos, particularly the one relating to our FM20 giveaway for the winners that received a free copy of Football Manager 2020 and the announcement of our beta save, which was voted for you guys on a Twitter poll and the announcement of our main save for Football Manager 2020, which I'm still not going to speak about on this series, but I'm super, super excited to get underway. And as always, I've been Sean. This has been In The Mixer. And don't you ever forget to hashtag it. <laughs>